I'm Mark Reitenauer, and I'm sorry you missed my presentation at the Florida Citrus Show, but even if you're reviewing it, I was covering causes and control of Diplodia stem end rot and other fruit decays here in Florida and some of the work that we've been doing recently to uh, try to help address these issues. It is clear we need to have clean arrivals, not something like this carton where we've opened it up and there's decay. So this not only is embarrassing and loses reputation, but it also is a claim. Uh, we may have to recondition the fruit. It may have to be rejected in the first place or outright. Um, and that's after we put in all the resources for growing this fruit. We harvested it, we cleaned it, washed it, we transported it, and we graded out the, any bad fruit in the first place. And now something like this shows up. So we really need to work at de delivering high quality product to whatever consumer we're delivering to. And so while we can eliminate during packing and grading a lot of unsightly fruit, misshapen uh, fruit that has started to decay before we've even, um, as we've even harvested it, or has other types of injuries that are going to lead to in, uh, enhanced decay, during the shipment process itself, things like decay and pill breakdown can develop. And those are things we need to put a lot of effort in controlling beforehand. Um, really, it's the peel. The peel is the weak point in this whole link. The peak peel and the uh, stem end tissue there is where uh, many organisms can come in and invade the tissue, or maybe sites of peel breakdown, but that then can lead to decay. So there are a lot of different uh, factors that influence the amount of decay we're going to have uh, post-harvest. They include pre-harvest field conditions and tree health. And that's really going to be the focus of this talk. We're going to talk about really the pre-harvest uh, things that have changed out there and the ways that we might be able to um, deal with the issue uh, pre-harvest. Of course, harvesting and handling practices, we need to harvest it um, and handle it so we're not wounding any of that tissue. Many of the different um, pathogens out there are wound pathogens. They're not going to penetrate an intact peel. Um, so we always need to handle it gently. Post-harvest environment, again, handling it gently but also doing things like having uh, maybe fungicide applications, sanitary conditions, good temperature and relatively uh, relative humidity control and these type of things we can do post-harvest, which has been usually traditionally quite effective at controlling decay post-harvest. This is a poster that we put together and it's available on the uh, EDIS website at the URL that's shown there, but it's showing different fruit blemishes and decays that are caused by fungi and bacteria. And um, a couple things I want to point out. One, of course, is that not all these are going to cause decay. It's something like melanose or um, greasy spot. Those are more blemishes and not decay. But of the decay, I want to point out a couple things. One is at the bottom left, you can see two different types of green mold, um, penicillium digitatum and italicum, and then also sour rot, which is geotricum. So these are what we call wound pathogens that really get in through wounds and they need some sort of injury. Um, this is what a lot of Mediterranean environment, worldwide penicillium is the worst um, decay causing organism for fresh citrus. But in so, somewhere like uh, Florida in a subtropical tropical environment, we are dealing with more what we call latent infections like diplodia, stem end rot is our main uh, really decay issue. We also have anthracnose, especially on early season, um, uh, fruit coming out that are really green at harvest, uh, Phomopsis, uh, stem end rot, and other types of stem end rot. So these are more difficult and much more difficult controlled because a lot of these are developing their spores in the field during the harvest, during the uh, growing season, during the summer, during the raining season. And so they're often um, developing in some old wood, dead wood, and they sporulate and during the rainy season they, season, they drip down on the underlying fruit and they can infect that fruit. And often they're not infecting and causing decay right away. They are getting, like in this case of stem end rot, they're getting in around the button and maybe invading that really outer tissue around the button and the old uh, floral tissue that was remaining from that. Um, and thracnose is um, landing on the surface and germinating and producing what was called apressoria, which are little caps that will sit on the surface. And some of those will grow in and penetrate just a few little cells, layers down, but then they go quiescent or they become latent, which means they kind of go to sleep. 
and they're sitting there waiting for the right conditions to occur before they start to develop. And those are more difficult control because they're often protected more. So many of the fungicides that work against the penicillium molds don't work against these other ones. Um, and so we need um, other types of materials to control them, um, especially post-harvest, but also in the field. In the field, we're also seeing a lot more decay starting to occur right there in the field. Whereas before we could control um, post-harvest decays, often through uh, fungicide application, having sanitary conditions, through um, careful handling, um, we're seeing right on the tree before it's touched by the harvester, in many cases, or more cases, of decay happening. And so this is Diplodia, but it also can be other types of decay organisms as well. We don't know if they come in secondarily or if they're even starting um, and initiating some of the decays. Um, the next speaker, Dr. Zhao, she's going to talk about some of their very nice work when they uh, positively identified stem end rot, Diplodia, uh, in the fruit coming in from the field. So we have been looking for, we used to have a pre-harvest fungicide called Venlate, Venomil, and it was very good at reducing uh, having control of decay and holding it through much of the post-harvest handling uh, life of that fruit. So we could spray the fruit uh, as soon as two days before a harvest, and then you could harvest uh, two weeks after application and still get good control. And so it was a great product, but we lost it. They stopped uh, producing it in 2001. Uh, and then we found something called Topsin. I'm going to show some of this um, results as well. And it was working about as well as been late, but we never got a full label for it. So we have not had anything really good that could help control decay pre-harvest, at least the work that we did before HLB. With HLB, we're seeing a lot of this field um, decay that's occurring out there. And once it's starting to decay, we can't control it at all with any of the post-harvest methods that we have at our disposal. We've been looking at the ability of these pre-harvest fungicides to reduce post-harvest decay for quite some time. I started working on it shortly after I arrived. Our early work was in 1999. So we were looking at some of these products and we've looked at, uh, these are a list of some of the products, Benlate, Topsin M, Topsin F, so that's a, Topsin F is a flowable, a liquid, a headline, Paraclostrobin, Cosi, which is one of the copper products, a bound, which is Zoxostrobin, Enable, uh, Fenbuconazole, Aliette, Phosphatol, Ale. We included different formulations of phosphorus acid, which is usually get good against brown rots. Pristine, which is Paraclostrobin plus Boscolid. Actigard, which is a plant defense inducing compound. Scholar, which is Fludioxanil. And Fludioxanil is something that is registered post harvest for um, decay control and does work against stem end rots like Diplodia. We also tried Switch, which is a protonel plus fludioxanil, Bravo, which is chlorothalonil, and then Oxidate, uh, or HDH peroxy, uh, hydrogen peroxide, and PAA, which is peroxycetic acid, or sometimes called paracetic acid. And those last two are really kind of sanitizers. And this is a table of the first results we were getting. And this, again, we were starting back in the fall of 1999. We were testing it on different types of citrus, um, like um, tangerines, mandarins, and grapefruit. And we would harvest the fruit. We would spray the material, then harvest it generally two days and two weeks after application. So the two-week uh, harvest, let us see if it had some sticking power, some ability to, to protect over a period of time, or did we ha were stuck to harvesting just right after application. And this is even before uh, we were losing Benamil. Again, Benamil, they stopped producing in 2001. And so Topsin really wasn't on the scene yet. And what you can see here is it really just Benamil is the one that gave us significant reductions in um, decay control. And even Benamil, sometimes it wasn't significant. It always tended to be lower, um, but could be environmental conditions or whatever. Even something like Benamil once in a while did not give significant reductions in decay, but the other ones were not giving any significant reductions in decay. Moving into 2001, 2002, we um, started including thiophenate methyl, and you can see that we did get reduc significant reductions from both uh, thiophenate methyl and benamil. And um, 
and, redu and reducing total decay. And um, we, when we do our experiments, we are pretty um, severe on the fruit, meaning we, we often are, are not holding them at the coolest conditions and we do not treat it with any fungicides. So, and we do um, store them for long periods of time. You see, we're storing them here like 80 to over 120 days. And you see the high levels of decay. Um, that's not commercially acceptable at all, but it gives us better chance of picking up significant differences. So if you see us and we have very high levels of decay, we're often pushing the fruit longer duration storages under harsher conditions because we want to accelerate and have a worst case scenario and then we're more likely to pick up if those diff differences are significant or not. Sometimes we can see a, a reduction in decay, which is you know, half the decay, but because of the variability and the variation that we see in our samples, uh, it may not come out to show significant differences. So that's why we have to push it and push it longer to see if it actually becomes statistically significant. And I'd put together this summary table in um, in the 2005 of the work up to date. And, uh, and what we did is we took uh, the different types of fruit, the tangerine, oranges, or grapefruit. And then I have the number of, of um, times that there was some significant differences, reduction in decay, uh, over the total number of experiments we tested for that particular um, type of fruit. And so you can see with Benamel, we had four out of six times that we got some significant reductions. And even when it wasn't significant, this, the trend was still there. Uh, oranges, one out of two. Grapefruit, five out of six. Um, thiophenate methyl, you can see also the times we did test it, we got a lot of times that were significantly um, reduced decay. And it usually was in the order of around Benamil's control level. Um, Paraclostrobin um, did give us occasionally a significant reduction. And sometimes it was a tended to be uh, reducing, but not giving a significance. So we kind of kept that on our radar screen as a possibility to keep in, keep in mind. And phosphorus acid, uh, really it's, it's good against brown rot, but once in a while we saw it once with um, reduction in the stem end rot as well. Since those experiments, HLB has come into play. It's now rampant and we're seeing more decay pressure and uh, decay occurring out in the field. So we want to take a look at some of those products and then add some new ones that, that other research that we and others have done that suggest maybe they would they would work as a pre-harvest fungicide. So um, this is from last year's study where we had um, two different grapefruit blocks that we treated. Both All the grapefruit blocks are reds that we're um, talking about here. Um, we use water, we use uh, essential oil, thyme guard, which is thyme oil. So we've done some post-harvest work that shows essential oils uh, especially thymol, carbacrol can can reduce post-harvest decay, even stem end rot. Mentor, which is propioconazole, which is a new product. It's um, we haven't really tested it in Florida yet. It's supposed to be good against sour rot post-harvest, but we wanted to see if it had any pre-harvest effects here. Quadris top, you'll hear in the next presentation. They worked uh, and did some work with that. They applied it four times before harvest, and so we wanted to just go with a one harv one time application and then a, a harvest two days and two weeks applicate after application like we did in the previous experiments. A headline coming back to paraclostrobin since we got you know some sporadic uh, positive results with that. Mertec which is thiabendazole we use this pre post harvest for control of uh, stem and rots. It's not labeled pre-harvest but want to see how it might work in the field. Graduate A plus another post harvest fungicide combination fludioxinol plus azoxystrobin that we've shown can, is effective um, post-harvest. Want to see what it might do pre-harvest. And then Topsin, which is our best case um, kind of control that we found from previous research. It's not registered again, but we want it in there to be able to control, uh, to compare with. And so here are these two um, different blocks. This one block was treated in February um, and harvested two days or 15 days after spray. And you can see that um, we are getting, here's Topsin on the right and the control on the left. And you can see these later ones, although not always significant, especially when you get to Topsin uh, and Graduate and, um, and Mertec, some, uh, we're getting some significant reductions in decay. Um, if we did an uh, experiment in May, this was just as we were able to start getting out in the field when the pandemic hit. 
um, you can see again that we're getting some control with the Mertec and Graduate. Um, again, Mertec is TBZ, and then headline is, is a little bit better than that. Um, and that the Mertec and the Graduate appears to lose some of its, its effectiveness at the later harvest. So what this is suggesting is that these might be good in the short term. You could do an application before harvest and then go out and harvest two days after application and get some um, good post-harvest carryover. But if you leave it out in the field, then it starts breaking down. And flutioxinol, uh, from some of our previous work, tended to show that, that it did not have the legs out in the field, uh, that things like the UV light and environmental conditions tended to break it down uh, much more rapidly than the topsin or the bitumen before that and so that it would give an initial um, some control, but then it would um, not give as very good control later on. This season, we uh, continued the work. We took away some products that weren't working so well last time and added a few others. We wanted to see how they might work. Um, so we've got Topsin, Graduate A Plus again, Switch, Moravis Prime, Moravis Top, Headline, Thyme Guard, Citrus Fix, which is 2,4-D, uh, Oxen. Uh, and Quadris top again. So I'll walk you through the results from the four red grapefruit blocks that we evaluated this season. Uh, the first one on the top was sprayed on January 13th um, this year. The bottom one was sprayed on February the 1st. And you can see that I've circled the ones that really look um, most interesting, like there's significant reductions in decay compared to the control. And you see in a, uh, a trend here in terms of Topsin and Graduate A+. And you're going to see that in all of the um, four figures that I'm going to present. And on the left is Diplodia stem end rot, the incidence, the percent of fruit that develop any decay. And this fruit, again, after harvest, was exposed to more harsh conditions. So we had five days under degreening conditions of 85 degrees Fahrenheit and uh, 5 ppm ethylene. And then we transferred it and held it for three weeks at 75 degrees Fahrenheit. This is all under high relative humidities um, to help promote that decay development. And so again, we got Topson and Graduate. And then Headline on this top one, again, gave us, it looks like a significant reduction on the uh, first harvest, but not doesn't look like on the second one. The, uh, the second grapefruit block on the bottom, again, Topson and Graduate, in this case, Moravis Prime, um, was giving us less decay as well. The next grapefruit block was sprayed February the 23rd. And again, you see this one, a lot of ours were giving some reductions in decay. Many of the different treatments are um, giving a reduced um, decay. Uh, focusing in on Topsin and Graduate again, uh, which are the lowest again in this case. Uh, Moravis Prime, Headline again, and then Thyme oil actually gave us some um, reduction here as well. But if we look at the final block that we sprayed in March 15th, again, Topsin and Graduate are being consistently low. And um, in Moravis Prime, we had a lot of variability. Uh, and several of these ones in this block, we were having quite a bit of variability in the results. Uh, but again, the headline, the Paraquistrobin, was giving us tended to, was giving us a uh, less uh, less decay as well. So to summarize, um, Graduate A has really given us consistent good results, similar to Topson. Uh, and one experiment, we may have got a little bit of breakdown or, or less control at the later harvest, two weeks after application, but it has done very well. It's, it's, it's not registered for pre-harvest use, though. It's a post-harvest fungicide, but we don't use it much here in Florida for uh, post-harvest decay control. Um, it really is more popular in places like California where they have resistance to their traditional fungicides uh, like TBZ and Amoslil and such. And so we haven't really had the need to switch over to graduate A plus. So our flutioxinol plus is oxystrobin. So if we can get that kind of formulation um, registered for pre-harvest use, it, it could be a really um, a good option for us. Mertec TBZ, um, it gave a similar control to graduate A plus. Again, it, it's a post-harvest fungicide. It's not registered pre-harvest. Um, we dropped it from our trials because it was giving us similar results as Graduate A+. And since we already use TBZ post-harvest, we don't want to have that added pressure for resistance development. 
um, and getting resistance to TBZ developing here in Florida. Um, headline, again, sporadically, we do get some uh, significant reductions in stem and rot uh, control and also Moravis Prime. So they occasionally give us some effects. The other ones, again, mostly no. Um, we did not really see significant effects except for spotty ones here and there. With that, I thank you for your attention. And if you want more information on post server resources, you can go to our website or you can contact me through my email listed below.